order. À l'ordre, à ce moment-ci. Pursuant to two standing order 38, a motion to adjourn the House is deemed to have been made and seconded at this time. Therefore, the question is that this House do now adjourn. Member for Regina Wascana. All right. Good evening, Madam Speaker. I'm pleased to have the opportunity to follow up on the Liberal government's proposed fertilizer policy, which I also raised in this House just before the summer break. On December 11th, 2020, Environment and Climate Change Canada released a document titled A Healthy Environment and a Healthy Economy, Canada's Strengthened Plan to Create Jobs and Support People, Communities and the Planet. The release of this document was important enough to warrant a press conference by the Prime Minister himself, accompanied by several of his Cabinet Ministers. At 78 pages, this document is a lot to take in. But what is most concerning is on page 45, where it indicates that the government will, quote, set a national emission reduction target of 30 percent below 2020 levels from fertilizers, unquote. Madam Speaker, I had the opportunity over the summer to talk with many farmers and farm organizations about this policy, and there are many people with many concerns. Given that fertilizer is already a major input cost for Canadian farms, it follows that farmers already use as little of it as possible and only as much as is necessary. The only way to reduce fertilizer emissions by 30 percent seems to be to reduce fertilizer applications by 30 percent. Such a policy would be harmful to Canadian farmers, Canadian consumers and to the global food supply. According to the Saskatchewan Association of Rural Municipalities, a typical farm consisting of 1,000 acres of canola and 1,000 acres of wheat would have their annual profits reduced by approximately $40,000 per year if these proposed fertilizer restrictions were actually implemented. Madam Speaker, such a massive reduction would be devastating not only to farmers but to the many urban entrepreneurs they do business with. Madam Speaker, a massive reduction in fertilizer would trigger a massive reduction in crop yields, which would then lead to a dramatic increase in the price of breads and bread products at the grocery store. With inflation and the carbon tax already driving up the price of everything at the grocery store, the last thing Canadian consumers need is for the price of groceries to be driven up even higher by these new fertilizer restrictions. But the problem will not be limited to Canadians. Indeed, Canada already produces enough food to feed everyone in this country, and we export the surplus to international markets. As brutal as these fertilizer restrictions may be, we should still be able to produce enough food to feed everyone in this country. The problem is that the amount of food that Canada exports to foreign countries will be dramatically reduced. That means that these fertilizer restrictions will simply cause many of the poorest people in the world to starve to death. Madam Speaker, given that the only way that to reduce fertilizer emissions by 30 percent seems to be to reduce fertilizer applications by 30 percent, how will the Liberal government implement this policy? With a fertilizer tax similar to the carbon tax? Or perhaps by restricting the amount of fertilizer that farmers can buy with some sort of licensing program? Or is the federal government simply going to nationalize every potash mine in the country and reduce output by 30 percent? Madam Speaker, the Liberal government's plan to reduce fertilizer emissions by 30 percent does not seem to be particularly well thought out. But I would be curious to hear from the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary as to how exactly the government plans to implement this policy. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Well, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the um, the honourable member from Regina, Wiscana, uh, and I think he would agree with me that Saskatchewan is one of the world's agricultural powerhouses. Uh, last year, Madam Speaker, despite historic challenges uh, from the pandemic, uh, the drought, and Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Saskatchewan agriculture and food exports rose to a record 17.5 billion. That's a powerful testament to the resilience and determination of our farmers in the face of adversity. There is no question that fertilizer continues to play a major role in that success. 
Farmers in Saskatchewan and across Canada continue to work hard to ensure the responsible use of fertilizer. They are practicing the four R's, the right fertilizer source, rate, time and place for maximum yields and minimum carbon footprint. They are using the latest tools such as crop sensors and drones to help them align fertilizer rates to the needs of their crops. And according to the recent census, the number of Saskatchewan producers using trees for shelter belts and windbreaks rose by over 50% since 2016. At the same time, Madam Speaker, we know that we must build on this excellent work if Canada is to remain a world leader in sustainable agri-food production. That is why uh, we are working with producers and the entire sector to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from fertilizer application and note that word, Madam Speaker, emissions. It is important to understand that this is not a mandatory reduction in fertilizer use across the board. We know that fertilizers are necessary for agricultural production. That, I'm sure the honorable member would agree, is non-negotiable. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, the honorable member mentions uh, consultation. Uh, and that is exactly what we have done. Over the past year, uh, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada held consultations with farmers and the industry across Canada to develop a collaborative approach to reduce emissions from fertilizer use. The conversation has continued into the fall uh, with technical workshops focusing on solutions to key challenges. And we will continue to engage with the sector as we know the challenge ahead of us will require collaboration and partnership. Our goal is to work with producers to develop voluntary approaches to meet the 30% target. Voluntary, Madam Speaker. We know that the best way forward is to expand the use of practices and technologies that farmers can use to reduce emissions while maintaining or improving yields. We also understand that there is a need to support these efforts through information and knowledge exchange. Uh, farmers will also need help when making the transition to new practices and approaches. We certainly look to the leadership of our farmers as, as well as collaboration with provincial and territorial governments and other stakeholders and uh, partners, Madam Speaker. We want to move forward together, guided by our discussions. We are confident that action to meet the fertilizer target will build on the practices, innovation and expertise that Canada's farmers and scientists are already using and developing to improve nutrient management and reduce emissions while maintaining the quality that Canadian agriculture is known for around the world. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Honourable Member for Regina West Canada. Thank you, Madam Speaker. In closing, I would like to share some insights about how this government seems to make announcements first and then figure out the details later. In a reply to my order paper question Q89, the government said that it, it did not even study how rationing fertilizer would affect the su food supply in Canada, affect Canadian agricultural production, nor how lower exports would affect the global food supply. Furthermore, the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada admitted in writing in order paper question Q90, that the government didn't study how rationing fertilizer would impact the economy of Saskatchewan, whether it be from reduced crop yields or from the resulting unemployment, including fewer jobs in agri-retail at canola crushing plants and farms throughout the province. So, Madam Speaker, my final question, why is an issue as fundamental as food production not worth studying before an announcement? Honourable Parliamentary Secretary. Well, thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and indeed, we are looking at all solutions for reducing fertilizer emissions. Over the next day, uh, decade, the government will invest over $1.5 billion to help uh, Canadian farmers adopt sustainable practices and technologies. Uh, that includes $12.8 million to support two living labs in Saskatchewan, which bring farmers and researchers in the field uh, together to develop sustainable practices that work in real farm conditions. Our first ever uh, Indigenous-led li uh, living lab will bring together Saskatchewan producers and First Nations to explore practices such as crop diversification for our pesticide management and landscape diversification. Thank you, Madam Speaker.